or this we did we use this one last time? Uh, I think we used it last time. I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. I think we did. I can't, I can't remember. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Check this out. <laughs> On this episode, we're going to talk about women. More specifically, we're going to talk about strong black women and, you know, some of the issues and things that women deal with. Um, of course, I will not be doing this episode alone because I'm not a woman. <laughs> uh, my guest is uh, no stranger to the show. She's been on the show several times. Um, good friend, good friend of mine, seasoned woman, if you will. My homegirl, Trish. Trish is back in the building. Trish, what up? Hey yo, how are you? What's cracking? What's cracking? I like that seasoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When okay. you when you when you're a little up in age, we say seasoned. Don't don't get cute. All right, so let's just leave it a season. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. Glad to have you back on here. Um, Thank like you. I said, wanted to talk about um, uh, women and strong black women. And um, I guess I'll start there. Like, to you, um, as far as women, I guess, that you've encountered or maybe grew up with, um, who who would you define as a strong Black woman to you? Hmm. I uh, mean, besides yourself. Good comment. Um, <laughs> so my mom, I would say, the women in my family, most of the women in my family were mm -hmm. strong. Black are or were strong black women. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was definitely a strong black woman, a strong black Leo woman. Okay, okay. Stubborn. Gotta love, oh my goodness. Gotta love the Leos. <laughs> I guess. So what? What? What made? What made your mom uh, a strong? In your eyes, what made your mom a strong black woman? Um, her tenacity. Her um, courage, her um, work ethic, um, her faith, um, several things like that, you know. Okay. Uh, I always saw her work until she didn't work. Uh, when I was young, I would go to work with her. She worked for a pediatrician's office. Okay. She didn't do any hard, hard labor. But, um, you know, just her work ethic of getting up every day, going to work, me as a young child being able to see that, um, you know, I'm sure instilled things in me that I needed to grow up and do the same. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so in, in, with that being said, would you say that, uh, like the old saying, did, did the apple fall far from the tree? Uh I did not fall far from the tree in certain aspects of being a strong woman. I consider myself a strong woman and most people around me would consider me a strong woman. So okay. um, it can be misconstrued in certain ways um, because I'm a person that loves really living my true self and being my true self. I don't fake who I am. If you're, if you know Trish, and you've been friends with Trish, you're going to get Trish every right. time you see Trish. <laughs> so um, you'll always get me. It's not You're not going to get any copy of me or anything like that. So, yeah. But uh, sometimes people can take, because I am straightforward, I don't beat around the bush. If I have something to say, I'm not rude. Mm -hmm. you, know, now you have to poke the bear for me to get to the point that you would think I'm rude. But um i say i say what i need to say i say it like it is but i got that from my dad honestly. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. i got that from my dad my dad was straight up with it you know um but people tend to think that i because of that people tend to take me for mean and i'm not mean i can be mean but everybody can be mean you know so Right. People, uh, people that know me, they know that I'm not mean. I'm really loving, and I'm a great. I can be a great friend. 
But um, I just say say it like it is. I say things that people probably want to say, but don't. <laughs> and, and you're a New Yorker too, so you're not gonna hold your tongue. Exactly, I've heard that before. It's so funny. It's not that I forget I'm a New Yorker, but talking to people outside of New York, they will right. often be like, "Oh yeah, you New York, you yeah. are New York." Cause y'all so aggressive, y'all like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? but I mean, it, it's 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 in the water, I guess. I don't know. It, it's this is what it is. But, you know, if you live in New York, you it's be all way. about where you came from. So if you live in New York, you can't be no wimp in New York, right? Right. You you gotta know how to you know navigate the streets, and if you go into the city deep, you got to know how to navigate a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you can see anything and everything on a, on a given day in New York. I'm sure. And people will smell. They, <laughs> right. They, they will smell the fear on you if you yeah, got it. Just like you say with tourists. We are we can automatically pick out a tourist in New York. Oh, and okay. I live in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. still, I can uh, pick out a tourist in New York. Oh, yeah. Tourists. <laughs> Tourists in New York stick out like sore thumbs. Yeah. If I know somebody that that's close to me, I know is coming to New York and they want to navigate the city, I'm like, act like you're from the city. Look like right. you're from. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so growing up, did you have like uh, any mentors, either like personally or professionally or both? Female wise? Um you know, my the age gap between my parents and myself was large. Okay. My mom had me at an older age. And um, so I would say a lot of people thought that my parents were my grandparents. Oh, wow. Growing up, like in high school and stuff like that. So my brothers and sisters were made my godparents, um, along with being my siblings. Um I had an older sister that I would say she always kept me around her. Um, so I would say probably my older sister, Joanne, initially. I ended up going to the same college that she went to, you know, things like that. So um, through the years, there were older women, elderly women that I looked up to, mm -hmm. uh, another godparent. Um, so, yeah, there's. You know, in in people that I personally know, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, you know, as we as we talk about, you know, strong black women, is um, when you talk about women, particularly black women, um, in particular, sometimes they can be stuffed into these uh, tropes or stereotypes, um, and and I I put them in like four different categories, and we're going to touch on each one. Um, one, there's the um, sassy black woman. <laughs> uh, then there's the um, hypersexual Jezebel. Um, and then there's the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there's the strong black woman. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's talk about, and, and these tropes and stereotypes have been how can I put this? They, they've been present for as long as we've been here, right? Yeah. Be it right or wrong. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the, the, the sassy black woman. Um, what, what do you think about that when we get, when our sisters get that label being sassy? It's interesting because a uh, strong black woman, woman in general, Mm -hmm. I recently saw a clip uh, on social media and the women, uh -oh. black women were saying, <laughs> <laughs> right, social media, right. <laughs> black, women, black women were saying how they don't like to be called strong black women, mm -hmm. you know, because that tends to be the first, I tried to figure it out. Like, why wouldn't you want to be called a strong black woman? I consider myself a strong black woman. I, I wouldn't be offended by it. Mm -hmm. They were straight up offended by it. Like, why is it always that I got to be a strong black woman? I'm like, what is wrong with that? You know, and so they just felt like what I got from it is that they felt like that's the first thing that people go to. Like, mm -hmm. oh, she's a strong black woman. Like, you know, and it's not even a reference to like black power kind of thing. Mm 
if mm -hmm. we call each other um, African American black women, call each other uh, strong black women, that's one th strong black woman. That's one thing. But for some reason, they were offended by outside calling us strong black women. And here's what I think: I think that it's because people tend to take us as angry because most black women are they can be aggressive or they say what they want they you know it is what it is but that's because we've had to survive mm. you know what I mean? things that other races or whatever haven't had to survive so we had to figure it out you know our gen my generation what are we generation x x we had to figure it out. You know, this other generation that we talk about Z that's out right now, we're like, y'all are weak. <laughs> we had to figure out and go through. Our parents didn't baby us. Our parents made sure that, you know, if you had something that you had to go through, it's not they would they wouldn't help you or be there for you, but you had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to make a way. So anyway, the sassy woman... I don't know. Am I sassy? Like, well, I'm not saying you. I mean, just your your overall thoughts on it. Yeah, I was just thinking about it. Um, sassy black woman. Like, what is that? Like, does she just is she kind of flamboyant? You know the one that you know the one that's kind of gonna talk back always and talk shit. The, yeah, always come with the with the snap back or yeah, something. Like oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Clap back with the quickness. Listen, I know some and um. I don't tend to gravitate to women like that mm -hmm. just because I can't take all that mouth all the time. So sassy black women, I often say, I wonder how men, often they're stereotyped by black men because a lot of black men will be like, oh, or you see black men that go to another race or go to a, have a mm -hmm. white woman. Mm -hmm. And they will often say, you know, if you ask them, why don't you want a black sister? Why don't you want a sister? What's going on? Oh, they got too much. They teach too sassy. They got some. No, they gonna call you on your stuff, on your mess. Right. And in my opinion, that's why you know, don't be a wimp. Be a man. You can have a sister with you that if she's sassy, then and you don't like sassy sisters, don't go for it. But there, there are a plethora of black beautiful women out here that are not necessarily like that. We're all different kinds of women. So what is the song? I'm not a real woman. Shaka said it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shaka and Whitney. Yep. yep. We, we certainly can. Be. <clears throat> so the sassy black woman, I, yeah, I've seen them, you know, all the mouths and just pow, 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 pow. You know, sometimes uh -huh. you got to step back from that, though. You know, I'll say this. Um. I'm not a fan of all the all of the lip either. <laughs> but um but I get it to some degree too as well, Trish, because I think um in a lot of ways there's something behind that. Like that's a right. shield, if you will. Yeah. Um, and if you if you're willing to peel back that layer, mm -hmm. I think you'll find that there's something there. Mm -hmm. And you know, especially when we th as we think about mental health i mean sometimes there's some trauma there True. um sometimes there's um you know it's a shield there to protect them from right. anybody hurting them again so um you know so it, it there's a lot that goes with that so i don't yeah as i'm older now i don't necessarily just dismiss it. oh man she talked too much or she got too much lip or whatever like that um where i probably wouldn't have 20 years ago mm -hmm. um but I think it's, I think there's a lot to it. Um, and yeah. I do, you know, I know women like that too. Um, and I, I think that kind of, let me just speak for the women that I know. It appears to have dissipated over a period of time, at least for the ones that I know. For the ones that you know. So yeah. in other words, you knew them as being sassy, sassy and mouthy or whatever, and now they're not so much. Right. What right. you're saying? Yeah, because, yeah. you know, age and wisdom changes a lot. It's a defense me mechanism, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Trigger something, trigger. You got trig. Everybody has triggers. Mm -hmm. So black women have had to, you know, when you hear black women, I don't need no man. To <laughs> I may not need a man, but I want a man, mm. and it's a choice. You know what I'm saying? So 
you could say all that, but that all came from you being hurt. The man didn't do right. Whoever you had in your life didn't do right. Maybe now you're a single mother taking care of all the kids. He ain't paying child support, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Um, that is a defense mechanism in my, but a lot of black women have triggers and defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Like like you said, they can be broken down by the right person. Right. But that woman also has to give it a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. You have to give it a chance because if not, what happens? You'll be alone. (laughs) I mean, and it's okay to be alone. I'm single. I'm good with being single. I feel an empowerment in being single. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it's my season, it's my season. But Mm -hmm. some women are just like, "Ah, ah, 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 ah." listen, you need to change that, sis. Let it let somebody in. Be a little vulnerable, you know. I have been hurt by love. I have, you know, I was married and I'm divorced now. Um, Have been for good, what, now seven years divorced? It's been that long? It went went quick, Kyle. When I think about uh, where I am, my place now, where 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 I'm sitting, Mm -hmm. how long I've lived here, I was like, wow, it's been seven years. (laughs) So, yeah. Um, but you know, you, you either embrace it or you don't, you know, it's Mm -hmm. one of those things like I've been hurt by love and I've never given up on love, Mm. never given up on love. Even if I was hurt, no matter how much I was hurt, I will not give up on love. Now, what, what about the, uh, hypersexual Jezebel? I mean, we, you don't have to go far. You mentioned social media a little earlier. We don't have to, neither one of us have to go far to find uh, mm-hmm. images, uh, videos um, of us as far as black women, um, you know, being portrayed or them portraying themselves as these over sexualized creatures. And it's a lot. Uh, and, and again, those tropes and those ideas didn't just start in 2023. No. You know, that really came back. You can trace that back to slavery. Oh, yeah. Um, so so what what is your take on the hypersexual Jezebel? <sighs> so... I think that all Black women, of course, we're human, we're female, we're empowered, or we're, we can be sexual beings without being hypersexual. Mm. Um, I think there's a respect aspect of it. Um, when you get to social media, a lot of this generation does not, I won't even say this generation, because I've seen older women, actually older than me, Doing some things on social media, I'm like, okay. Like, I'll be like, okay, grandma, or whatever. A lot of that is because it's just for likes. It's mm. to get that, that video to go viral or whatever. So right now in this age that we're in, going to um, social media has changed a lot of the dynamic of like they'll do, it's almost like they're desperate. Yeah. That I don't like. You know, I I feel like as grown women, especially, if we feel like we want to be, you know, uh, a more overt sexual being, then that's your, that's your business. That's your choice. Mm-hmm. And you're grown. So you could do what you want to do. But it also doesn't have, you don't, you also don't have to show everybody else. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... I, it's interesting. It's quite interesting. Now, I've been hearing a lot of this music that comes out. This is Generation Z. <laughs> and, and they are, when I tell you, Blake, okay, we had Little Kim. Mm-hmm. In my era, it was Little Kim, and she was talking, you know, whatever. And even her raunchiness, I'll say, the girls out there now, yeah, they are way worse with it. I'm like, how are they getting away with saying this stuff? 
I heard, I heard, and they're very um, masculine with it. I'm seeing these, these young rapper girls come out now, female girls come out now, and they are very hard with the whole, there's one from New York that is, you know, New York can be hard. New York rap can be hard. But that whole back in the day, you, you know, she reminds me, I forget her. I'm not gonna even going to say her name, even if I remember it. But mm -hmm. she's out now and she's quite popular, getting quite popular. Mm -hmm. And she's very masculine with it. And I'm like, what is that and why? And I said to, I'm in a social media group with a few friends from all over, DMV area, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm so sick of the lack of femininity that's out mm -hmm. there right now. It's like, where is it going? Like, there are, we get your softness back. Like, <laughs> problem. We don't have to go to that side. Listen, to each his own. Yeah. I don't know what, you know, what, what, where, what her life path was or whatever, <laughs> but. Maybe she grew up, grew up around all males. Maybe that can do it. Just like men that grow up around all females sometimes can tend to be turn out as adults homosexual. It happens, you know. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think um, I think <laughs> I, I was gonna say I think um, I, I think the 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 like I said, it goes far, so far back. Um, even in how far back it goes, like even when you mentioned as far as like the, the the young rappers and stuff like that, I'm okay with you expressing yourself. And if that's the way that you choose to express yourself, okay, that's fine. I just think like, I hope that there's somebody explaining to them like at 22, 23, 25, 26, like at some point, you're gonna be 40. You're gonna be 50. And that's not and, gonna work for you. <laughs> no, no. And I mean, like, make get your money. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm all for everybody getting paid. Yeah. But just understand that, you know, you have a very, very, very just as an artist, you have a small shelf life, but you have an even smaller shelf life if your artistry is based about uh, around how you look and yeah your graphic lyrics yeah. and that goes for men and women i mean uh, unfortunately men don't it's a double standard men don't have the same things right you know because you could be 50 years old talking about how many chicks you bagged or whatever like that and there'll still be people buying your records mm -hmm. um but you know you mentioned foxy i mean you mentioned kim i think i look at kim i look at foxy like you said that's they're from our era you know they, they can come out and do songs and stuff like that and do shows and tour and stuff like that but they're not making any new music. And they're, I'm guessing that Kim and Foxy are probably in their 40s now, you know? Yeah. And, and so, like, you know, you have to be realistic for these young, young ladies who are in their 20s. And then not just that, but you're also... And again, I don't want to make it sound like I'm, I don't want that music to happen because right. you can make what kind of music you want, but right. you, there's a generation of young women that you're promoting and selling this too. That's right. And you have to be careful about what it is that you are and what, what you think that you're saying is not what they're listening to. And then and it's not what they're hearing or maybe whatever message, you, if, if there's a message involved at all. Um, but I, I I could get on that. I could stay on that soapbox all day. What? Because um, I have heard some recently. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I heard, I heard a song the other day. I was like, hey, wait a minute. I was like, where it is like this? Oh, it's it's I mean, and it's like this the whole now. If you give me that for a, if you give me that for 16 bars, that's one thing. But if you give me that for a whole song, whole song. I'm like, okay. But you know what? They have a generation for it. Yeah. Like we, you know, of course are gonna turn that off or like, but there is a generation for it. And it's like wild. I'm like, I want yeah, I want our women, our young girls. My nieces, nephews, all my nieces. I'll talk. We're talking about women. My nieces mm -hmm. to stay feminine, like that's. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with um, LBGTQ. I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. 
saying mm. in general as a woman, as a female, there's a softness about us mm. that is uh, is leaving or lacking in this new generation. And I just, uh, the femininity part is just, it's so beautiful to have. It's like, why wouldn't you want to have that? But Hey, and speak, speaking as a man, we like them soft. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Not, we like them soft. Just to attract a man, but it's just like, just be soft. Be a so what, what about the angry black woman? Because we, we, oh, we got you know, Trish, that. Trish, we hear about that all the time. And I mean, like, you know, the angry black, we see it a lot. Me and you, you and I both are on social media. Um, you see it a lot on social media, the angry black woman. And, and a lot of times this, I don't necessarily even know if she's angry. It's just that maybe she's tired of being, you know, looked over, passed over or done wrong. And she's fed up. Yeah. Yeah. And they, uh, they just take it out on everybody. I knew a female um, in one of my employer employments and uh, she, <laughs> They, uh, so you females will talk about a bitch face. Mm -hmm. Some people say I had I have a bitch face or I, I have a version of a bitch face. But um, is, that like a, is that like a mean face? Mean yeah, mug? face where, you know, even in your regular everyday stance, you just kind of have this face mm -hmm. that looks like don't come at me. Don't oh, approach. Like, don't fuck with me. Back in the day, guys, right. Guys used to say, yeah, I wanted to talk to you. But you but look mean. You just look like you. This guy in Harlem, I'll never forget. I was in Harlem sitting on uh, uh, the hood of a car, my friend's car. And my friend was there to see somebody or whatever. And so we're just hanging out a summer night, beautiful night in Harlem. And this guy, I saw this guy. You know, he was around. There was a few guys around. But this guy, he, you know, he looked a, a couple of times. But he never came over. And me, I'm, you know, I'm old school. So I'm not one of those females that's like going to go with you necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking for, if you want to talk to me, I'm, I'm looking for you to come to me. And so later on, when I kind of got to know him, he said, he said, yo, you were looking like, don't even come over here. You know what that face is. So. <laughs> and I don't feel that I have that, but I've been told that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, the angry black female, I mean, there's a lot of them out here now. And I think, like I said, it kind of goes with the sassy one that has triggers where they're just kind of angry at the world. I was talking about somebody I work with. She she could walk down the hallway and you look like, I don't want to mess with her. She look like she had a bad day or whatever. You know, kind of mad at the world. <laughs> that can happen both on the male and female side, female and male side. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the angry black woman is definitely out there. You see them fighting all the time, or at the club and fighting, and every everything is an issue. I can't stand it. Everything is an issue. It's like it's almost like they feel like the the world is at, out to get them, or mm -hmm. or you know something happened in their lives that makes them have that trigger where they feel like they need to defend themselves like right away. You know, like. Calm down. It'll be okay. And maybe, maybe for some though, for some that get deemed angry black women, maybe it's just the um, maybe they're constantly fighting. And I don't mean physically fighting, but they're constantly fighting against, like you said, being done over. They've been passed over for jobs, or they've been done over by this, these dudes, and they're just fed up. And they're t and 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 basically, you, we encounter them where they're at the point where they're like, nobody's gonna walk over me. Yep. ever again yeah yeah they just and they bring it out right away i mean they're mm -hmm. like they will cut you off in a minute like as soon as you I'm, wait i'm just trying to say such a <laughs> get it out it's like immediate and it, i mean yeah, they're, not, they're not gonna give you a chance yeah that's kind of sad to me though i mean because you know we don't have to be like that like even like i said it's a choice it, it, there are triggers. I don't walk everybody's same life path, but there are triggers that happen that cause us to act a certain way in life. And um, I just think the angry black woman, if she just stepped back a little bit and just, you know, navigate life a little easier. 
Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the uh, I guess the next question I have for you, um, you talked a little bit earlier about uh, this generation. Um, what advice would you give this next generation since we're Gen X or I don't know what generation we are? We're what, X. what advice would you give? Well, I don't okay. know about you. I'm older than you, right? I'm, I just yeah, you're older than me. Whatever, Kyle. I just turned 56 <laughs> in April. How old are you? Do you mind saying how old you are? Oh, the world, no, I'm 50. Five oh. old. So Generation X, we are. Uh, generation Z is Z is this generation. I get, I get them all confused. But if you were to give a young black woman, a 22-year-old black woman, <clears throat> a bit of advice, what, what would you tell her today? I would tell her, number one, to give herself grace. Mm. Give herself grace. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't think that uh, with the social media pressures that they have that we didn't have, that she needs to be something that she's not. That she needs to, you know, um, be a certain way just for others. Those social media, those people, you know, it's so sad when I hear these young people that have um, committed suicide based on somebody, you know, uh, classmates badgering them on social media. Oh, you should die. You should kill yourself. It was a 10 year old girl. What was in Georgia or she she hung herself. What does a 10 year old girl know about hanging herself? Right let alone killing herself. So I would say, give yourself grace. Um, Try not to fall under peer pressure. Try not to try to be something that you're not. Be proud in uh, marching to the beat of your own drum and, um, you know, making your own path for yourself. Make the right choices because life is about choices. Mm. So make the right choices. Think about your choices before you make them. A lot of times we go through life or as young women or young girls and grow up and, you know, um, only because we don't know better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you know, like, what was it, Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. That is, that is a very true statement. You grow and mature. And a lot of times you have to be smacked by life before you get it. You know, making mistakes is not always a bad thing because it teaches you to the next time make the better choice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, make great choices. Give yourself grace. um, March to the beat of your own drum. Be yourself. Be who. Live your true self. Facts. I I couldn't agree more. I think... um... I think that's I think that's very I think that's very important to do. You know, like you said, just being yourself and living in your own truth. Yeah. You know, because you know, especially when you turn on these phones and you click on these computers, you know, sometimes you don't know who's who. Yeah. And sometimes people tend to be or try to be something that they're not. That they're not. Um, and it's far, far easier to be yourself. Absolutely. Um, I was just going to say, it's so much work to be somebody else. Like, yeah. it, you, you don't have, free, you don't feel that freedom. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people in the world, I have to say, that don't, that will never live their true selves or know yeah. what that means. And it's such a freedom in being your true self. You know? it, it truly is. It truly is. Um, one more question before we get, get you out of here. Uh, what encourages you about the young black women of this generation coming up if are there things that you see that encourage you maybe remind you of what you were in your you know in your era when you were growing up since you're seasoned um what encourage you about you know young black women now hmm that's a great question i've never thought about that um that's i guess- why I have you on the show because i come up with great questions <laughs> I just thought of it like two minutes ago. I guess 
Um, if I had to look at the example of my nieces, for instance, okay. they've grown up around strong women. Uh, have they always made the right choices? No. But do I expect them to make every right choice? No, that's life. But um, they are, a lot of them tend to be go-getters. Mm, so exactly. they want to, um, you know, have a good life. They want to work for it. They do what they need to do to go get it. And um, yeah, I would say that's encouraging. Those ones, it's not everybody. You mm -hmm. know, it depends on, I think, your lifestyle and where you grew up and, you know, it makes a difference. So, um, yeah, the, the ones that, you know, go for what they want are go getters go through, whether it's going through college and getting your degree, or I have, uh, two new nurses in the family. Okay. So, um, yeah, just being proud that they are doing what they're setting their lives up in a lovely way. It mm -hmm. is. It is. Well, Trish, it's always great having you on here. Um, this has been fun, and, and episodes always go by by fast. Um, I mentioned you're on social media. Do you want to? You got any social media? Info? You don't have to. But. <laughs> you asked me last time, and I was like, Kyle, I ain't got to you. However, I started my own business. I started an online boutique. Okay, and uh, it's called Zawadi Enterprises LLC. And so I, I have everything from health products to jewelry, to clothing, to special gifts, things like that. So it's a plethora of things. I'm uh, setting up my website currently, uh, but okay. right now, social media, Facebook, Instagram as Zawadi LLC, enterprises.llc. Okay. Now spell Zawadi for those people like me who can't spell. Z is a zebra, A W A D I, mm -hmm. and it is my uh, Swahili name that means the gift. Okay. Do you know what Kyle is in Swa uh, Swahili? I don't, but I can find out. Find out for me. I need to know. I, I might be. I might become the. I don't know. <laughs> the Zahili, the, the Zakizi podcast. I don't know. Zikizi. I don't know if it would be Kyle in. Uh, Swahili, but I can try to work. I out. might be the 12 Zakizi in podcast. Yeah. Listen, you never know. I did those <laughs> uh 23, 23 and me genetic, uh, whatever. Okay, okay. And, uh, I am my ancestry is from deep in Africa and um, certain parts of Africa and um, Jamaica, some of it was quite interesting. So, okay, well, yeah, yeah. I'm from South Carolina, so you know, I'm from Africa. Listen, that's what we that's what we came. We came from like the east side of Africa. <laughs> Drop us off right there in Charleston. The east side. The east side. <laughs> the, the, the lower east side, like Manhattan. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so so y'all make sure y'all check out when when will you when do you think you'll have the website up? Um hopefully definitely by the end of the year. I mean okay, okay. maybe by the end of summer, but I'm working okay. on okay. I'll, well you you'll be back I'll on before then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you'll be back on before then, and we'll talk more about it. But uh, you guys check her out uh, and make sure that you download, subscribe to the 12 Kyle podcast. Uh, the podcast drops every Thursday uh, at midnight. We have bonus episodes that drops on Sundays at midnight. Um, if you feel so inclined, hit us up on Cash App, dollar sign, T-W-E-L-V-E-K-Y-L-E. -E -E. uh, we also have a YouTube channel. Make sure you check us out on YouTube so that you can watch these videos as well. Uh, that's going to do it for us. So for my girl, Trish, I am your boy, 12 Kyle. This has been another edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. We'll catch you guys next time. Five G's.